Fifth Virginia Infantry, William Baskins, Henry Clinton Bear, 52nd Virginia Infantry, John D. Brooker, 14th Virginia Cavalry, Andrew Brooks, Emmett Brooks, William Brooks. Uh, it was just a minor skirmish. <laughs> it was. Uh, it was basically. Um, I really had been camped in. Fishersville in winter quarters. He heard of uh, Sheridan and Custer primarily riding from Mount Crawford where they had burned a, a bridge down there, or tried to burn a bridge. And the weather was horrible. The weather had, had fought them all the way. It was raining and sleeting the day here that uh, this battle was underway and it had been raining heavily and uh, been a real nasty month up to that point. Uh, and even in February when uh, Sheridan was ordered to south. He was actually ordered south to, to join with, with Sherman. Mm -hmm. And he really didn't want to do that. He, he'd had his glory in the Shenandoah Valley, and I think he kind of wanted to see it through. It might not have been much more than a skirmish militarily, but politically, it was pretty significant. Jubal Early's loss here was the final battle of the Valley Campaign, and opened the door for Union General Philip Sheridan to assist federal forces east of the Blue Ridge. The surrender at Appomattox a month later was hastened to no small degree by what happened here. In 1997, the bicentennial of the founding of what would become Waynesboro, a local group began staging a day of events every first Saturday in March around the commemoration of the Battle of Waynesboro. The event has grown from a small ceremony in Constitution Park back during that first year to a coordinated set of events including a commemoration at a local cemetery where a number of the men who lost their lives in the battle were laid to rest to a day-long open house at the Plum House Museum downtown, which was caught up in the heat of the battle that March day in 1865. Local reenactors groups help bring the Battle of Waynesboro back to life. And what they do brings the Civil War back for them as participants as well. I guess the thing is you get, get a feel for what the soldier went through. There's things you learn by doing this hobby that you can't read in a book. It's, uh, you know, if you read in a book and, uh, you know, you hear that the troops went the right shoulder shift and it, it, that doesn't mean anything to you unless you've actually been out there. It's like, you know, when you're going in the right shoulder shift, that means you're getting ready to take off. You're, you're getting close, it's, you know. Danger, danger, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, little things like that, and then you, you know, you, you. We don't do it all the time, but every now and then uh, we'll cook and eat just like they did for a weekend, and we try to figure out how they survive doing that. And, uh, it's, uh, but you know, you come to the realization that uh, they were some hardy people in those days. If they lived to adulthood, survived all them childhood diseases. They could live on hard tack and salt pork for four years. There's a lot of us in our group, and so someone will pick up a book and say, hey, this is what I found out. Uh, Internet's a great source. Uh, movies are a great source. Documentaries, we watch a lot of documentaries. And then, of course, going to the battlefields and the battles themselves. Uh, we read up uh, whatever battle we're going to do. We read up on it and get as so much information so that when um, uh, the folks do stop by, we can uh, they can give them a good history lesson. Everybody has their own little uh, niche of history that they're interested in. Uh -huh. And as a group, uh, we, you know, it's, it's, it's a wealth, wealth of information. You share that information across yeah, the line. Yeah, everybody has yeah. their own little interest of what, you know, during that part of the time period. And uh, that's what they study or when they read something, that's what sticks in their mind. And that's, and it's, uh, it's neat to sit around the campfire and talk about different things, get different perspectives. And, and uh, you know, history is, uh, you know, is one of those things where it's you know nobody knows everything and uh, and it's neat to uh, rationalize you know what do they mean by that you know what was what was going on and you know, sit down with a bunch of people and it comes to life sometimes. It's great. It is what the soldiers were given as part of their ration. Uh -huh. um, they would keep it in their haversack and they would just you know bring it out whenever and. Uh, eat it on the road if they were marching it was just something that they could just eat uh, if they were able to have a campfire and, and be able to cook they would uh, bust it up with the butt of their rifle because it, it's hard tack it is what it says and they would mix it in uh, with whatever they were cooking and we'd make it a nice thick uh, beef stew or it would add a lot of consistency to the food and, and they were able to get uh, um, better nutrition. Uh -huh. And it's pretty much, you were explaining the, the ingredients, very basic, right? Very basic, water, flour, and salt. That's 
that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, and it's, you had to add it to things because it does not taste very, I mean, it's a bland, bland crackers. Very, it, uh, very basic it, food. Amounts to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it was something that they could give out to the soldiers and they could just carry it along. So everybody had it. And it was just cheap and easy to make. When we were sitting there today and uh, John Ockletree was reading off the names of, of the soldiers that, that were buried in that cemetery, it, that, it brings it to life. It's like, you know, that was a lot, that's quite a few people when you start stop and think about it. And, 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 you know, and the people who died, you know, from their wounds that are buried in their own home cemeteries that aren't on that list. It's, uh, yeah, it does. It uh, really does. It's, uh, I, I, I fear, I don't fear, but I, I feel like that this, it's a time period that, we don't spend enough on as a society that really defined really defined uh, who we are as a nation then I mean it's, it's a time period where you know Lincoln created federalism I mean that's we got that's where we got an all-powerful government that's and now we're living in a time period where that might be used against the common man uh, you know it's uh but where'd it come from well at this we fought a war over it you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's uh, it's a very interesting time period it really defines us as a nation today we're coming up on 150 years from the start of the Civil War in 1861. Hard to think about that, isn't it? So much attention is paid to the war that it sometimes feels like we're still fighting it today. I think it's just the fascination with the history of the battles and, and the war itself. And for me, uh, as a woman uh, portraying the Civil War, I love the chivalry of it. I get out here and yes, I'm cooking and I'm, I'm doing all this, you know, getting that ready for them. But the guys get me wood, they get me water to wash my dishes. I don't want for a thing. And I, I think I love that most about it, the chivalry about it. Women are treated uh, as ladies, taken care of, and I love it. It's revered in my mind uh, because it was such a hard war. Uh, they believe so strongly in their state's rights and to see what they went through, families, the hardships, it's my favorite. I honestly believe the show today shows that, that um, people are interested in American history. They're in, they are interested where they came from and what it took to make this land. I think more so now than ever that it's important that we let people know why we do what we do in this world and why people want to be here, willing to die to be here in this country. Um, and so um, I think that it just it says a lot for the spirit of America that uh, they want to preserve and recognize the people. Uh, Confederate Union uh, is still Americans dying. So uh, they, they want, to, want to recognize the, uh, the significance of, of uh, what people did. For more information on the Battle of Waynesboro, look for the April edition of the New Dominion magazine. We'll have a feature story in the magazine with more on the battle and efforts to preserve the slice of Waynesboro's history. For the Guest of Free Press, I'm Chris Graham. Thanks for watching. Ready? <laughs>